And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for September the 29th. This evening we have several systems active across the world, even just on this worldwide map. We have two Category 4 cyclones, that being Hurricane Sam and Typhoon Mandul, both regained that intensity today. Um, we also have several remnant systems marked. Peter is losing its chance of reformation. Gulab is looking still more likely than not to reform in the Arabian Sea. And 98B is dying over eastern India after making a tropical storm landfall under our analysis uh, last night. Or earlier today, I should say. It's day 271 of 2021, and so far we've had 76 storms with the addition of 98B, of course. And unfortunately, that number is likely to rise over the next few days. In the Atlantic Basin on day 121 of hurricane season, of course, I mentioned X Peter and Sam. We also have Invest's 90 and 91L. 91L is losing its chance a bit to, re, uh, to form uh, due to 90L, which is still very likely to form. Nonetheless, a very incredible hurricane season we've seen so far. In the Eastern Pacific on day 137 of hurricane season, our area of interest here has dropped since uh, last night down to 40%, and it doesn't look like this is going to be tracking mainly towards Baja California Peninsula anymore. Looks like this may be a weak system if it were to form and then maybe be gone by the time it gets to Mexico. In the Western Pacific, we have Typhoon Mandul, again, a Category 4 large typhoon, slowly moving still, and 91W, more likely than not to, to form, although it is dealing with some shear from Mandul's outflow. In the Northern Indian Ocean, you can see Gulab there over India, generally moving northwestward towards the Northern Arabian Sea. Models are still keen on that one, reforming. 98B is, of course, remnant, as I mentioned. We did have that as a tropical storm. And an area of interest has dropped down to 10% as model guidance has decreased, but there is still the potential that we see a brief tropical cyclone before it makes landfall in India. In the Southern Hemisphere, finally, um, we have a 20% area of interest. This has gone up since last night now, 20% uh, rather than 10%. So we could see an early season storm here. Getting to the satellite imagery in the Atlantic Basin tonight, we have, of course, the main feature being Hurricane Sam there. I almost wanted to call that Hurricane Larry, but this is Hurricane Sam uh, looking pretty good right now, especially after what it's been looking like the past day or so. If you look towards Bermuda at the top of your screen, you can see the little remnant spin of Peter losing its chance of reformation. And you can see if you look towards um, the southeastern part of your screen, you can see that mess of thunderstorm activity way south. It's not typical that we see systems that far south in late September. That is both of our invests. Again, 90L looking to be the more likely one to develop. In the Eastern Pacific, the thunderstorm activity associated with our area of interest is actually not too impressive, I'd say. We're not seeing too many overshooting tops. I mean, it's got some sustaining convection there, but it's just not looking too good. And environmental conditions don't seem to be um, too favorable for development, which is, I'd imagine, why the models are actually backing off a bit on that one forming. In the Western Pacific, you can see our large typhoon here. Mindul is massive with that beautiful eye there. Thankfully, it's far away from land, but it could still bring some swells and maybe some tropical storm force winds to the far coastlines of Japan. And you can see to the east there, it's hard to pick out, but 91W is there being sheared by Mindul's outflow. In the northern Indian Ocean, you can see our two um, systems there, the spin associated with Gulab and 98B. Uh, I almost want to call it 98W, but this is 98B. And you can see thunderstorm activity in the southern Bay of Bengal associated with our next area of interest. In the southern hemisphere, we're not really seeing anything quite yet that would signify tropical cyclone formation, although we are seeing some thunderstorm activity increase in our area of interest. And models have increased in confidence that we might be seeing a system form here. In the sea surface temperatures, the area of interest in the eastern Pacific is in piping hot waters ready to go. It's just the environmental conditions are not going to look too favorable for this. In the Atlantic, for every system that we have, 
it's looking very favorable. Just the environmental conditions for and Peter are not looking too good. It just can't get the convection to sustain over that circulation. And the Indian Ocean for all of the areas of interest in the northern and southern hemisphere looking generally warm, ready for those systems. And in the Western Pacific, we're looking very warm, ready for uh, Mindul, 91W, and any other systems that may form later in the year. And I want to point out the Australian region and South Pacific, they're warming up, getting ready for our seasons. We're about a month away, believe it or not. The sea surface temperature anomalies in the Indian Ocean were generally above average. We're starting to see maybe some cool down from our systems in the Bay of Bengal. In the Western Pacific, we're generally above average. Same case in the Australian region and South Pacific. In the Central Pacific, we're generally near to below average. In the Eastern Pacific, we're generally above average here. In the Atlantic, we're generally above average. The sea surface temperatures might be showing up on here as a little bit of upwelling from Sam, but the upwelling from uh, Larry uh, has almost fully recovered. And that might change with La uh, Sam's track. I keep wanting to call Sam Larry. It's just kind of similar to the storm. Moving on to the On This Day segment for 2003 is where we're looking here. Hurricane Juan was approaching landfall in Nova Scotia. This would make a fully tropical hurricane landfall in Nova Scotia. It's not too common that we see fully tropical hurricane landfalls. Of course, we did see one earlier this year with Hurricane Larry. To the southeast of Juan, Kate was a tropical storm. Formidable, I'd say and it would be getting near the Azores, but ultimately bring minimal impacts to all land areas. And Typhoon Kapu was heading out to sea as a Category 2 Typhoon. Thankfully, I'm, I'm glad that that storm did not go into Japan. It was heading northeast out to sea. I do recommend that you uh, follow our Cyclone History page on Twitter, as this Cyclone History stuff is very interesting to learn about on a day-to-day day -day -day basis. Moving towards the naming lists, the Atlantic is looking less likely to potentially get two names, but it's still possible. The next two names are Victor and Wanda, of course. The aux auxiliary list will be uh, starting off with Adria. In the Eastern Pacific, it's looking less likely we'll see a storm here, but the next two names are Pamela followed by Rick. In the Central Pacific, while everyone is here in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, that is not the case in the Central Pacific, as we are still waiting on Hone. In the Western Pacific, we're looking towards potential formation from 91W, looking more likely than not that that will form. The next name is Lion Rock, followed by Kampasu. In the North Indian Ocean, the next two names are Shaheen and Jawad. In the Australian region, we're again, we're getting close to these seasons in the Southern Hemisphere, about a month away. We're looking out for Patty, followed by Ruby. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsurai. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.